We have a company that if we were 10, 20, 30, 50 times the size, people would be talking about the depth of the team, the knowledge of the assets, the investors that has supported this. And what what's lost is sometimes people say, oh, it's a micro cap, so it's got to be high risk, mm -hmm. you know, high velocity capital. And we're none of those. Things. Welcome to Proven and Probable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us today is Brian Williamson. He is the CEO of Jericho Oil. Mr. Williamson, welcome to the show, sir. Morning, Maurice. Sir, glad to have you back on our show. In our last interview, we discussed how Jericho Oil has been strategically making the transition from acquisition to development through the Anadarko Basin with a focus on the stack play. So far in 2018, Jericho Oil has remained committed to the task of development with the spudding successes of the ward room and the source beer wells. Sir, please get us up to speed on these two wells. So the wardroom and this, the storage beer well are our first two stack wells. And our goal has been and will continue to be to now grow Jericho through the drill bit. And the wardroom, just for a refresher, was the focused on the Merrimack formation, which is the shale component of the stack play in the Anadarko Basin. So the wardroom well has done extremely well. And in terms of its production to date, so just to give you a little data, so the wardroom well has been on for about seven months and change um, in terms of production, and it's produced over 80,000 BOEs so far. So, you know, almost paid back over, it's paid back over half of our investment in the well, currently doing about 250 barrels a day. Um, so from our perspective, we feel real good about what we're seeing out of the, the wardroom. It's continuing to decline, obviously, um, from where it started. But eight months later, when we're seeing a well that started out at 950, doing 250, we're really feeling good about it. So it's right where we thought it would be, um, producing as we thought it would produce. And um, it came in under budget. So everything about the wardroom was was great. No, no you know, nothing we would change about that. Um, the source beer well, which was a well testing the Osage, the lower Osage, which is another stack formation. So remember, the stack has many formations, and obviously we will not get to test them all um, before the year end, but we will continue to delineate and test different components of the formations that we believe are going to be the most oil-bearing zones. So the lower Osage is one that you know, if you think back to our first interview, Maurice, that was one that we talked about, which was a real focus of us because we think that rock can be real oily um, and, and an excellent um, source of hydrocarbons. And it's prevalent throughout all of our acreage. So the source beer well, um, being a lower Osage well, does not produce the same as the Merrimack shale well. The lower Osage well takes a little bit more movement. You got to pump it to get it to come on. And so we put a gas lift on it for the first 30 days, realized that that was not the right design, switched over to a submersible pump, got the well going. And we're pleased to say it's continuing to produce at, at or above 400 barrels a day. And we are now day 75-ish in to the, to the to Sword Spears production. So, you know, everything we thought we're seeing, um, like, what we, like what we're seeing from the submersible, the thing we would change, um, it is a show well. So, I mean, some of the things that will change now that we've announced the trebuchet, which is going to be drilled this month, um, we're going to change the initial component where we won't go to gas up the start. We'll immediately go to submersible. We're going to go with a bigger submersible to move more fluid initially. So we think that'll actually accelerate the performance of the trebuchet. And I think that's going to make a difference in terms of getting oil quicker out of the well, which is important when you have higher oil prices. You want your oil right now. Um, you know, but as a show well, the sword spear has been great. Um, like everything we see, rock looks really good. Our suite of logs showed a lot of good um, interbedded charts there. So, you know, we're going to continue to target the lower Osage, hence the trebuchet. Um, as well as the Merrimack. So you're going to see that these are going to be the dominant things that you'll find from Jericho as we push forward in the stack. You know, speaking of the trebuchet here, you just issued a press release, but you know, the third well there. Give us a little bit more details if you can on that. Yeah, so I mean, when, when you test a formation, 
um, you want to show the breadth and depth. So the idea was always not to just quit after one well. Uh, we intend to drill many more lower Osage wells. The trebuchet is an offset to the sword spear. Um, and the idea there is to pick a fairly proximate location so that you have um, confirmation that the, the, the oil in place is there where you believed it was when you went and, and, and did your geology work. Um, I think on the trebuchet, what you'll see is we're, we're hoping to increase the speed at which we drill. We understand the rock better and how it drills. So we should be able to drill it faster. Um, I think the frack you know, that we used last time made sense. I think, you know, obviously we'd love to have more data, but the reality is, is that the, the frack will look similar to the one that was done last time. Um, but the trebuchet is key to the AMI joint venture we have there, excuse me, the armor joint venture we have there because it establishes the, the two year term on all 6,600 acres in that farm out there. Um, and for us, that's a big deal because now we have two years to drill up um, at our leisure those 6,600 acres. So pretty excited to spud the trebuchet, um, get that well going. And, and as I said earlier, I think you'll see faster results. Um, you'll also see and hear from us a little bit more in between spudding and production. So we will continue to update our investors in the market on the status of the trebuchet um, as we go forward with the drilling. Now, does Jericho have any recovery projections? You know, I think we're looking at the trebuchet pretty much in line with the sword spear. Um, we're looking at about 400,000 BOEs for the well. You know, we're, we're expecting that to be dominant by oil. Um, but, you know, 400,000 is our target BOE for, for the sword spear. And I think for this trebuchet, it'll be about the same. Brian, shifting the focus slightly, can you comment on the activity occurring at the northern boundary of the Oklahoma stack play and how this may impact shareholders? So we started talking about the, nor the northern stack play about a year ago, and there was no attention paid to it. The market sort of mapped the, 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 the stack ending just above our acquisition in Blaine County. Um, this was not deemed to be part of the stack at the time. Um, if you look forward now a year, it's an incredible amount of activity that's happened there. You have 1800 percent increase in leasing. Um, we have Exxon drilling, we have Alta Mesa drilling, you have Newfield drilling, and all of them are focused on the northern stack. I mean, Exxon has two extended laterals going in. Newfield just reported results from their northern stack acreage, which were outstanding. Alta Mesa just bought a whole bunch of acreage to fill in in their northern stack play. And now North, Alta Mesa's midstream company, Kingfisher Midstream, is going to run pipes and facilities right across Major County, um, which is all going towards the explosion of activity in the northern stack. Very exciting news there. Brian, what is the next unanswered question for Jericho Oil? When can we expect results and what determines success? So, so for us, you know, it, it, with a new play in like the stack, success is well over well improvement. Um, you don't make quantum leaps. You know, if you look back, you know, years ago when we were in the Bakken, the results that we see now on you know, show wells in the stack would be deemed huge successes. The technology and the technique for extracting oil gets better and better. Um, and what you're going to see is continued successes, continued improvements in the stack. And what I think is as they become systemic, the market will realize that this is a play in a very good location a real oil friendly jurisdiction and one that has access to tremendous transportation. Um, for Jericho, it's not just the stack though. You know, the stack is what we've spent 2018 developing and talking about, but behind the scenes, we have been working very, very hard on our other assets. Um, they are just as special as what we have in the stack. You know, we, we're a small company, so we can't do everything every day but we have some amazing things that we've acquired in the downturn. And the market is just going to start to hear about them soon as we are ready to present them and bring them out for development. But they are no less opportunistic and unique and special as a stack. Um, they're different formations, 
but they're just as oily and just as interesting. So we feel really excited as we unpack the whole portfolio that is Jericho. You know, Jericho oil is one of the preeminent names so far that I know of that uh, really maximizes the use of optionality. So kudos to you there, sir. Mr. Williamson, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? So, so one of the things that myself and my team think about a lot is, you know, the microcast space. Um, we are new to it. You know, Alan has been a great guide. He's our president, and he's been in the junior markets for 20 years. Um, if you if you were to take the team that is Jericho, if you were to take the investor base that is Jericho, and our company was 10, 20, 30 times the size, it would be such an important component of people's consideration. They would say, wow, you have all of these solid institutional like long term family office investors. Um, that's amazing that you have them and they've supported you and they have stayed in and participated almost every round that Jericho has raised money on. And the reality is that's the only kind of investor who comes in when things are bad, when things are down, when oil is $25 a barrel. Uh, but what I've seen so far is in, in a lot of the micro cap world, people don't take the time to look at the quality of the team and the quality of the support. Um, and I think that for me, what keeps me up at night is how to get the investors to see what we are, how we're built, and how, and, and how successful we have the potential to be with the support that we have. You know, speaking of the support, just for the record here, the current share price on the TSXV is roughly around 54 cents. We have been active buyers at these prices. Uh, last question for you, sir. What did I forget to ask? So one of the things that I think you're going to see more and more of in the United States is the bottlenecks that are occurring. Um, and it's not just in unique plays. So one of the things that we have not done in the United States is expand our capacity for refineries. And there was an article today about it. Uh, we haven't built a new refinery in almost 50 years, 40 years. The reality is, is that the not in my backyard theory has caused people not only at the refinery level, but at the midstream level to really struggle to get pipes um, in the ground get facilities in the ground to move hydrocarbons across our country. Pipelines aren't new, refineries aren't new. We've had them for a long time, but we just don't seem to be able to allow for them to expand and grow. And that's gonna be a big problem if we don't change it. Our refineries are running so hard, um, we need more capacity. If we're gonna produce US crude here, we need more capacity. And these things are you know, slowly moving up the scale of problems that are going to be industry-wide if we don't find a way to move forward and bring new refinery capacity and new pipelines to the marketplace. You know, speaking of that capacity, the United States will be surpassing Russia in oil production. Is that correct? That is correct. So also, Maurice, the one thing that we, we didn't cover here that I think is, is important is we are, you know, our stock has um, moved down lately. And one of the things that we as a management and a board have decided to do is to do a course issue or bid. Um, we believe at these levels it's important for the company to support the stock. And we're going to go ahead and do that um, in, in special situations and not as an everyday thing, but we're going to go ahead and do a course issue or bid um, for Jericho. So we have that available to support the stock because we believe it's extremely undervalued. Now, Brian, for someone listening that wants to get more information regarding Jericho Oil, please share the contact details. All right, so Jericho Oil is traded on the TSX Venture under JCO, um, OTC, JBRUF. And if you need any additional information, you can always call our Investor Relations Department at 604-343-4534 or email investorrelations at jerichooil.com. And last but not least, please visit our website, www.provenimprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenimprobable.com. And for our listeners, we want to share that Jericho Oil is a sponsor of Proven Improbable and that we are proud shareholders of Jericho Oil for the virtues conveyed in today's message. Brian Williamson of Jericho Oil, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable.
Thanks for having me, Marie. All the best to you, sir. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.